Hello friends, welcome to Fears Cloud Learn to Lead. This is Ashu. Good morning to all the students. And today we will discuss very important current fairs of 9th of September 2021. You can see two best images of the day. But today we will discuss very important and the most important current fairs. So watch this video till last. But I am requesting you all the student that you can download our application careers cloud from the description box link. After that you can log in with the email ID and you can click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two year. Both the subscription prices are very much low but we are covering 90 to 95 percent of the current fairs which can come in every type of exam. This is the genuinity, this is the hard work of a fairs cloud team. But how we are covering this current fair? We are providing you daily section. In the daily section you will receive three things. One is the detailed current fair. Second is the question and answer format and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on daily basis. Next is the weekly section. Again you will receive three things. One is the detailed current fair. Second is the question and answer format and third is again quiz section which you can attempt on our application but on the weekly basis. Most important section is the monthly. We are providing four type of PDFs. One is the detailed current fair. Second is question and answer format of current fair. Next is the best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer and the pocket PDF. It means two liner and the three liners current fair will be given to you so that you can revise the current fair in quick format. But to enhance your performance further, we are also providing topic wise current fair. We are providing you 20 most important topics which are very important for every type of exam. It means if you want to cover all the news related to one topic, you can cover all these news just from single PDF. So you can use topic wise PDF if you want to cover one particular topic. Next is banking awareness section especially for the banking students we are providing three things one is the detail second is the question and answer format of current fairs only related to banking and economy and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on your application on monthly basis and it is also related to banking and economy. If you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single PDF then you can use exam PDF for the revision. We are also providing detailed budget and economic survey, also expected question and answer which can come from budget and economic survey. If you are appearing for your state exam then we are also providing state current fairs and the specialty is that we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things comes under one subscription. We are not providing different different prices, different different subscriptions. All these things comes under one subscription. You have to just download our application. You have to log in with your email ID. You have to click on this crack current fair section to subscribe a current fairs for one year as well as for two year. Both the subscription prices are very much low. If you see, you will definitely surprise. But if you are a new student, you are just starting your preparation, then I am advising you to subscribe for the two year current fairs. It will definitely benefit you. And both the subscription comes with 10% extra discount if you use this code ASH10. If you have any query, you can email us on this email ID or you can call us on this number. So let's start today's current fair that is 9th of September 2021 but I am requesting you all the students that you have to like this video, you have to share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform. You can also join our telegram group from the description box link. So let's start with the most important question section and here is the question. Which country became the first country to adopt Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency as national currency? So this is very, uh, you can say important question because this country became the first country who adopted any cryptocurrency as the national currency and this cryptocurrency is the Bitcoin. And answer of this question is El Salvador. So answer of this question is B. So the Central American country El Salvador becomes the world's first country to adopt Bitcoin as a national currency. And you can also see here El Salvador. And uh, here is the map of El Salvador. You can see this is the North America here. Uh, Mexico is there. And uh, this is El Salvador, El Salvador. And this is the Central America because below it is South America. So it is a Central America country. And uh, the capital is San Salvador. San Salvador. You can also see here this is San Salvador. This is the capital of El Salvador. And the country has passed a resolution to make Bitcoin as a legal currency alongside with the US dollar. It means there will be two currencies. One is the cryptocurrency, second is the US dollar which is already running. And the country, uh, country launched a wallet, digital wallet known as Shivo or it is also known as Cool, which offered $30 of free Bitcoin for the adaptation. It means if you are, uh, if you want to convert your currency to the Bitcoin, then uh, this wallet will provide you $30 at free of cost Bitcoins. And El Salvador uh, country has purchased almost 400 Bitcoins. It means the government had purchased almost 400 Bitcoins 
and 200 Bitcoin Stellar machines or you can say the ATM machines of the Bitcoin are being installed across the country for currency conversions to assess Bitcoin. So 200 uh, ATM machines related to Bitcoin already installed. And Bitcoin will help to prevent the remittance of the banking transactions which will be processed by 1.5 million citizens of the country living in other countries and send money home. So Bitcoin is a very good medium so that uh, you can transfer the money from one country to another without any uh, you can say third party intervention. And uh, uh, remember, I think all the students know about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency without a central bank or the single administrator that can be sent from user to user on the peer to peer Bitcoin network without any intermediary. Uh, it is the world largest cryptocurrency which was invented in the year of 2008 by an unknown person or the group of people using the name Satoshi Nakamoto. So you can remember Satoshi Nakamoto. And it was launched in uh, uh, like uh, 2008. And uh, this person, uh, this unknown person belongs to Japan. And remember the capitalist Sen Salvador. Now we are moving to the next question. What is the rank of India in the Huron India's future unicorn list 2021? Very important. And this list is released by Huron Research. Huron Research Institute. And India's rank in the, uh, you can say unicorn list or the startup unicorn list is third answer of this question is B. First rank basically goes to United States of America and second rank goes to China. So you can remember. So you can see here India become the world third largest startup ecosystem follows USA and the China and Huron uh, this uh, India future unicorn list 2021 released by Huron Research Institute and India become the third largest unicorn ecosystem first rank goes to United States and third rank goes to China. And number of unicorns in the United States are like uh, almost uh, 396 exact number and China 277. 277 unicorns in the China and United States 396. And what is the meaning of unicorn? Unicorn stands for the startup whose valuation is uh, 1 billion dollar or more than 1 billion dollar. Then it is known as unicorn. And India have 51 unicorns like United States have 396, China has uh, 277, India has 51 unicorns worth rupees almost uh, not rupees in the dollar 168 billion dollar and 32 gazelles and 54 cheetahs what is the meaning of this gazelle and cheetah like unicorn stand for the valuation of the company is now 1 billion dollar or the more than 1 billion dollar uh, same as gazelle gazelle is a startup founded under uh, the uh, near about 2000 with a current valuation ranging from 500 million to 1 billion so it means if the valuation of the company or the startup is between 500 million to 1 billion then it is known as Gazelle and uh, it can become unicorn uh, within the two years or in the next two years. Next is the Cheetah, it is same again and it have an estimated valuation ranging from 200 million dollar to 500 million dollar. Then this startup is known as Cheetah and it can become unicorn in the uh, next four years. So this is known as Cheetah. So you have to remember three terms, 1 billion or the more than 1 billion, then this startup is known as Unicorn. Between 500 million to 1 billion, it is known as Gazelle. And the next is the Cheetah. It is 200 million to 500 million valuation, then it is known as Cheetah. And world most important, world most valuable, you can say, Gazelle company is Zilingo. Zilingo. It is a retail store and it belongs to Singapore. And world most valuable Cheetah company is Pepper Fry. So you can remember pepper fry. So this is the most valuable. It is a, uh, you can say also a retail store related to specially furniture. So it is pepper fry. And Bengaluru in India is the startup capital of India with 31 startups. So I think uh, all the students know because uh, maximum to maximum companies basically belongs to Bengaluru. So that's why it is the startup capital of India. And uh, you can also remember uh, uh, recent related news that in the global startup ecosystem index 2021 India was ranked 20th out of 100 countries so this rank global startup ecosystem index was released by one important company which is known as startup blink startup blink and uh, this company released this global startup ecosystem index which ranks countries and cities depending on the startup environment so in the country wise list, India was on the 20th position out of the 100 countries. And again, under this ranking, United States of America topped this index, followed by United Kingdom and Israel. So United States of America topped this index. So you have to remember, uh, Huron India, future unicorn list 2021. It is uh, uh, topped by United States of America, second China and third is India. Moving to next question. 
who has appointed as the managing director of the export import bank of india very important question even we are covering under the most important because this bank is very important export import bank of india and new appointment is basically lies with harsha bupender bangri so you have to remember uh, she succeed david rescuna because earlier the managing director was david rescuna who was appointed as the managing director of exim bank in 2014 for a period of 5 years but due to covid 19 or you can say other circumstances the time period was extended but now new person was appointed harsha bupender bangari or bangari so you can see here the picture of harsha bangari who was appointed as the managing director of exim bank and prior to this appointment she was also serving as the deputy managing director of the india's export import bank of india so you can remember very important appointment but uh, other appointments are very important here like you can see here the rekha sharma uh, rekha sharma was currently reappointed as a chairperson of the national commission for the women so remember national commission for women chairman is currently uh, uh, rekha sharma v vedanathan very important appointment basically he was reappointment reappointed as the md and ceo of india idfc india first bank idfc first you basically can say IDFC First Bank for the time period of three years. Reappointed as MD and CEO of the IDFC First Bank for the time period of three years. You can also see here the picture of uh, 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 V Vedyanathan. So RBI approves reappointment of the uh, V Vedyanathan, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the IDFC First Bank, and it is for the time period of three years. Reappointed. And uh, next is Shanti Lal Jain. He was recently appointed as MD. and ceo of indian bank we already covered this question in the most important section so guys remember very important appointments i am repeating again export import bank of india new chairman is harsh harsha bupender bangri and uh, she replaced david rescuna next is rekha sharma she was re reappointed as the chairman of national commission for women next v vedyanathan very important appointment he was recently reappointed as md and ceo of the idfc first bank and he was appointed for the time period of 3 years shanti lal jain he was appointed as the md and ceo of the indian bank recently and you can also remember exim bank uh, was established in 1982 its headquarters is in mumbai move on to next question who has been appointed as the new chairman and managing director of national fertilizer limited again very important question because we are talking about one appointment and this organization is very important national fertilizer limited and uh, this organization was established in 1979 and its headquarters is in noida noida is in uttar pradesh and who was appointed it is nirlep singh rai so answer of this question is c so nirlep singh rai appointed as the new chairman and managing director of national fertilizer limited and nfl is a mini ratna public sector undertaking under the department of fertilizer so you can just remember this appointment as same as in the question so you can uh, see here the picture Nirlep Singh Rai appointed as the chairman and managing director of National Fertilizer Limited. Remember the headquarters. It was asked so many times. Noida, Uttar Pradesh. Uh, and uh, you can also remember other appointments. Uh, here is Carol Furtado. Very important appointment because uh, she was recently appointed as the interim interim CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Ujjivan Small Finance Bank. Ujjivan Small Finance Bank. Next is Dr. Tajender M. Basin. Uh, he was recently appointed as the chairman. of the advisory board of banking and financial frauds very important appointment especially for the banking students chairman of advisory board for banking and financial frauds hitender dave again very important appointment he was recently appointed as ceo of hsbc bank india hong kong and shanghai bank corporation india he become the ceo so remember all these appointments now we are moving to the next section it is our very important question section but you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you're new on this platform and join our telegram channel from the description box link here is the question which state government signed mou with amazon india to boost e-commerce export so that the companies related to this state can attach with the amazon india and they can sell their products online through amazon and this state government is gujarat so answer of this question is b So Amazon India a leading e-commerce company signed a memorandum of understanding with the industries and mines department of the government of Gujarat to boost e-commerce exports of the Gujarat so that maximum to maximum export can take place from Gujarat and under this MOU Amazon will train and onboard MSMEs from Gujarat on Amazon global selling platform it will enable them to sell their unique uh, made in India products to Amazon customers across the globe and the workshops will focus on sharing expertise and providing training to the msmes about business to customer e-commerce uh, exports and selling their 
products through 17 foreign marketplace of Amazon because all the workshops, webinars and the training will be provided by Amazon and this will definitely this will definitely provide benefit to the MSMEs because they can uh, uh, they can provide this training from the Amazon and by this training they can uh, extend their export services to the 17 foreign marketplaces of the Amazon and this partnership will benefit the gems and jewelry, apparel and the uh, textile and the handicraft sector of the Gujarat which is very famous all over the world. Gems and jewelry is very famous uh, sector of the Gujarat, even uh, textile is also very famous sector of the Gujarat. Handicraft sector is again very important. So all these products related to these sectors can be uh, sell through Amazon uh, uh, platform. And uh, Gujarat is leading exporter all over India because Gujarat uh, uh, leading exporter contributes to more than 21% of India's export. 21% of all over India's export comes only from Gujarat. So that's why we are focusing on the Gujarat. And uh, remember, Chief Minister is uh, Vijay Rupani and uh, Governor is Acharya Devrath. Very important national parks. Yesterday we also covered this question. Uh, there is Vansada National Park, Vansada National Park, Black Buck National Park, Black Buck Marine National Park and Gir National Park. So these four are very, very important. Move into next question. What is the name of the portal which was launched by Bupender Yadav to monitor air pollution? Again, very important. And uh, Bupender Yadav is currently a uh, Union Minister of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. And he launched very important portal which is known as Pran. Pran means life. And uh, this portal for regulation of air pollution in non-attainment cities. And this is a portal to monitor the implementation of India's National Clean Air Program. And you can see here, Bupender Yadav launched Pran for tracking of physical as well as the financial status of the clean air action plan implementation for 132 cities. You have to remember under how many cities this was implemented. This was 132 cities. And it is a portal to monitor the implementation of India's national clean air program. And the portal was launched during the event organized as a part of the United Nations second second international day of the clean air for blue skies we just recovered and this day was celebrated on 7th of september every year and first was celebrated in 2020 and the portal will track the physical and the financial status of the implementation of the air action plan across the 132 non-attainment cities under the national clean air program and the portal will also disseminate information on the air quality management efforts under this national clean air program and as per the recommendation of the 15th Finance Commission under YV Reddy, report of the uh, uh, this uh, 15th Finance Commission, 4400 crore rupees have been released to 42 cities with a million plus population. It means to tackle the clean air program or just to implement the national clean air program. So remember what Ministry of uh, Forest, Environment and Climate Change, it is Bupinder Yadav and he is currently the member of Rajya Sabha from Rajasthan, from Rajasthan. Moving to next question, but you can also remember here the uh, the other options here like uh, first you can see here the B HIT, HIT stands for home isolation tracking, home isolation tracking and this is launched by uh, Bihar government, Bihar government or you can say Chief Minister of Bihar Nitish Kumarji, it is to monitor and track the home isolated COVID-19 patient across the state of Bihar. So this is HIT, it is, for, it is a basically COVID-19 application. Next is a Manas application. Uh, Manas uh, basically launched by his principal scientific advisor K. Vijay Raghavan and it is to promote the mental health, mental health or the mental well-being across all age groups in India. And next is basically Avas. Avas uh, is launched by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Housing and Urban Affairs and it is for Confederation of Real Estate Developers and Association of India. So it is for Confederation of Real Estate Developers and Association of India, but it is launched by Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry like Hardeep Singh Puriji. So you have to remember these things because these are very, very important application which was recently launched by state government or the center government. Now we are moving to the next question. Which company has acquired the online exam uh, preparation platform, which is very important. Again, I think all the students know this, that is grade up platform. And Edutech Unicorn Baiju, remember answer of this question is C, Edutech Unicorn uh, Baiju has acquired the online exam preparation platform GradeUp to boost the uh, Edutech presence in the online competitive exam preparation category. And it has been uh, rebranded as Baiju Exam Prep. So remember, now GradeUp will be known as Baiju Exam Preparation or the Prep. And GradeUp headquarter was in Noida. 
uh, it is currently also in noida but now it is known as baiju's exam preparation and it was founded in 2015 by three person one is the shobit batnagar second is sanjeev kumar and third is vibhu bhushan but you don't have to remember and this is the eighth acquisition of baiju in the year of 2021 so remember very simple question you can just remember as the question same in slide like grade up was acquired by baiju and now it will be known as baiju exam preparation move into next question who is appointed as new chairman and managing director of the rashtriya ispat nigam limited so many appointments today but uh, this is the last i think and new chairman and the managing director of the rashtriya ispat nigam limited this organization is very important this is also known as visakhapatnam visakhapatnam steel plant because its headquarters is in visakhapatnam andhra pradesh and uh, answer of this question is atul bhat d is the answer you can also see here the picture of atul bhat uh, he was uh, appointed as the uh, you can say chairman and managing director of rashtriya ispat nigam limited who is also known as the visakhapatnam steel plant but other appointments again very important like sn gormade uh, vice admiral sn gormade the full name is this and uh, he was recently appointed as the vice of chief vice chief of naval staff vice chief of naval staff and kamlesh kumar pant uh, uh, new chairman of the national pharmaceutical uh, pricing authority national pharmaceutical pricing authority kamlesh kumar pant amit banerji a uh, very important appointment because she was uh, uh, he was recently appointed as chairman and managing director of bharat earth movers limited beml very important organization of defense ministry move to next question a book titled geeta govinda jay dev divine odyssey authored by whom so very important book even uh, this book is released by our union minister of culture gk reddy ji and this book is written by dr utpal k banerji Dr. Utpal K. Banerjee, and he was also awarded with Padam Shri. So, Padam Shri, Dr. Utpal K. Banerjee, uh, wrote this book, Gita Govinda, Jai Dev, Divine Odyssey, and this book is released by Union Minister of Culture, Shri G. K. Reddy, or you can say Ganga Puram Kishan Reddy, and uh, uh, this is about the Gita Govinda. It means it is about the Krishna. And G. K. Reddy launched this book and also launched an exhibition on the Gita Govinda and program, Bajurgo Ki Baat, Desh Ke Saath in New Delhi. in english you can say uh, it means uh, talk of the elderly with the country talk of the elderly with the country and the objective of this program is to enhance the interaction between the youth and elderly people who are around 95 years or above 95 years or above and geeta govinda an important text of the bhakti movement depicts the relationship between the lord krishna and his consort radha and uh, jayadev is very important person again uh, uh, he was in the 12th century of ad and is the last great name in the sanskrit poetry who wrote the lyric poetry of geeta govinda to describe early phase of the love between krishna and radha so this was written by the jayadev and remember what ministry of culture ministry of culture comes under uh, uh, g kishan reddy and g kishan reddy is currently uh, uh, member of lok sabha from sikandrabad telangana sikandrabad telangana but you can also remember uh the other books here hare krishna mehta very important book specially for the odisha students because he wrote about odisha itihas or odisha history and the book name is odisha itihas odisha itihas itihas stand for history jit thayal uh he recently wrote a book names of the women names of the women so this is the book written by jit thayal next is jitender mishra uh um he wrote a book about aktri begum aktri basically begum aktri the life and the music of begum aktri so remember these books again very very important next is tata aia life insurance signed a multi year brand partnership with which player so again very important and this player is neeraj chopra so answer of this question is d it means tata aia life insurance signed a multi year brand partnership with subedar neeraj chopra who was designated as subedar in the year of 2016 and indian athlete and the olympic gold medalist as its brand ambassador and you can also see here olympic gold medalist sign first brand endorsement in with tata aia life he will promote the health and wellness among the policy holders and this marks the company's made first brand partnership with the neeraj chopra and uh, subedar neeraj chopra hails from panipat haryana you have to remember and uh, he won the gold medal in the javelin throw in 2020 tokyo olympics and uh, Uh, he won this award on the 7th of august that's why uh, 7th of august every year will be celebrated as national javelin throw day and as of august 2021 he is ranked second internationally by the world athletics so world athletics uh, 
uh, released a ranking of the javelin thrower player all over world and he is on the second spot. So remember these things about the Neeraj Chopra, we covered so many things about Neeraj Chopra in the earlier classes. But uh, uh, Indian Army uh, recently also named a stadium after Neeraj Chopra at the Army Sports Institute Pune. Remember Army Sports Institute of Pune now will be known as the Neeraj Chopra uh, Sports Institute uh, to honor his victory at the 2020 Olympic Games. But uh, you can also remember other important names here. All the Olympians are there like Saikom Mirabai Channu. Uh, he belongs to Manipur and uh, uh, she uh, won this award in the women's 49 kg category of the weightlifting. She won, uh, uh, you can say, a silver medal, silver medal in the 49 kg category of the weightlifting. And uh, she was the first player in the Tokyo Olympics who won the medal. First player in the Tokyo Olympics of 2020 who won medal. So remember, very important player. Next is An Avni Lakhera. She belongs to Rajasthan, Avni Lakhera. Uh, she won the gold medal, gold medal and uh, in the Paralympics. And uh, she was the first player who won the gold medal in the Paralympics. And she belongs to Rajasthan. She was recently appointed as the brand ambassador of Rajasthan for Beti Bachao, Beti Padao Andolan. Next is Lovlina Borgohen. Uh, Lovlina Borgohen uh, won the uh, bronze medal in uh, boxing. In boxing. And uh, you have to remember uh, she belongs to Assam and uh, she was also recently appointed as the brand master of Assam, Smagar Shiksha Abhyan. Smagar Shiksha Abhyan. So all the uh, players are very, very important. Even others are like uh, Ravi Kumar Daya from wrestling. You have to remember Ravi Kumar Daya from wrestling. And uh, in the 57 kg category, he won silver medal. And uh, PV Sindhu, badminton, uh, she won uh, bronze medal. Bronze medal. And uh, hockey team also won the bronze medal. And uh, Bajrang Punia, Bajrang Punia also won the uh, bronze medal in the wrestling in 65 kg category. So all the players are there. Moving to next question. Jan Small Finance Bank ties up with which state to provide the payment gateway service for Nam Shale Nan Koduge. Nam or Nan stands for my, Shale stands for school and Koduge stands for contribution. So it means my school, my contribution. And this was the scheme launched by Karnataka government recently on the teacher's day this was launched. So a Jan Small Finance Bank made tie up with the Karnataka government to provide the payment gateway service for the Nam Shale Nan Koduge uh, program which launched by the Chief Minister of Karnataka, newly appointed Chief Minister of Karnataka Basav Rajji, Basav Raj Bumai. During teacher day it was uh, launched on the 5th of September. So you can see here Jan Small Finance Bank boosts the Nam Shale, Nan Koduge, My School, My Contribution program. And this program is an initiative to create a platform for the donors who are willing to donate money to government schools of Karnataka in the motive of strengthen the public education system. It means who want to donate money, uh, you can donate under this program which is known as Nam Shale, Nan Koduge. And uh, this money will be utilized to strengthen the public education system of the Karnataka. And uh, the donation amount will be received in single account of the Karnataka Textbook Society. Karnataka Textbook Society which comes under the Department of Public Instruction. And then it will be sent to the respective school account so that they can utilize this money to uh, uh, provide better to better infrastructure to the students. And Jan Small Finance Bank will provide its complete payment ecosystem like RTGS, NEFT, UPI, um, uh, IMPS, debit card and all other things so that... Uh, maximum to maximum money can be transferred in easy way so to donor to make their donation effectively so you have to remember just jan small finance bank and the scheme and uh, what is the purpose of this scheme and this scheme belongs to which state so this is very important and uh, uh, remember what karnataka chief minister is basavraj and governor is thavarchand gehlot thavarchand gehlot very important national parks are there kudremuk national park is there uh, there is uh, uh, banergatta national park banergatta there is uh, Bandipur National Park, Kali Tiger Reserve, Dandheli Tiger Reserve, Nagarhol National Park. So all these in Karnataka. Remember this. And you can also remember about Jan Small Finance Bank. It was established in 2008 and its MD and CEO is Ajay Kanwal. Ajay Kanwal. And headquarters is in Bengaluru. And tagline is Paise Ki Kadar. Value for money. Paise Ki Kadar. Value for money. So remember this. Move into next question. Which union territory launched the business business balsters business balsters program in all the government run schools across union territory? So again, very important scheme, and the name is unique like business balsters. 
and uh, this scheme is launched by Manish Sisodia ji who is currently the deputy chief minister of Delhi so it means it is launched by Delhi so none of the answer here answer of this question is Delhi New Delhi you can say and it is uh, this uh, union territory launched this business balusters program which will be imp implemented in all the government run schools across Delhi so it is only for the government run schools remember and it is an initiative under Delhi ambitious entrepreneurship mindset curriculum and uh, you can see here the program aims to inculcate entrepreneurship mindset at the school level and under the business balusters program class 11th and 12th of Delhi government schools will be provided with a seed money of rupees 2000 to start a business and uh, uh, seed money project of the Delhi government school was previously implemented on a pilot basis of the school of excellence uh, uh, Khichripur which is situated in Khichripur where students were given 1000 rupees as seed money to start their own business just a small business or implement their idea now this is implemented under the business uh, um, blasters program but they are giving 2000 rupees to start a business and top 10 projects under the business blasters program will be directly admitted to the uh, bachelors of uh, business administration course in Netaji Subhash Chandra University of Technology and Delhi Technological University. So this is very important because the new generation or the class uh, uh, 11th and 12th students can generate a new ideas according to the new technology and they will get an opportunity to directly get a degree from uh, uh, these uh, very pioneer institutions like Netaji Subhash Chandra University and uh, Delhi Technological University and this course belongs to uh, Bachelor of Business Administration. So you have to remember this is Delhi government and you have to remember Delhi's uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor is uh, Anil Baijal. Anil Baijal, Chief Minister, you all know Arvind Kejriwal. Moving to next question, which payment bank and LIC housing finance has signed a MOU to provide home loans? So very important question, especially for the banking students. So answer of this question is India Post Payment Bank signed an agreement with the LIC housing finance uh, to provide home loans, to provide home loans. And uh, while this uh, organization, which is known as LIC Housing Finance Limited, will be responsible for home loans, credit, underwriting, processing and disbursement while the uh, Indian Post Payment Bank will look after the sourcing. It means all the money or the all the finance will be provided by this LIC HFL and uh, this, uh, this will also cater the LIC Housing Finance Limited objective to increase business contribution and India Post Payment Bank is currently distributing various general and the life insurance product through the partnerships with leading insurance companies and the credit products. With this partnership, this LIC Housing Finance Limited home loan products will be accessible to the customer through India Post Payment Bank extensive network. It means the home loans will be provided by this company and it can be assessed by the customers of the Indian Post Payment Bank. So this is very simple. And the home loans will be provided at interest of 6.6% uh, from starting and uh, maximum to maximum loan can be provided like 50 lakh rupees can be provided for the salaried individual. You don't have to remember the appointment, you have to just remember the MOU in between India Post Payment Bank and LIC Housing Finance. So policy will be provided by LIC Housing Finance, it means uh, loan will be provided by this company but it can be assessed through the Indian Post Payment Bank. And uh, remember Indian Post Payment Bank was set up under the Department of Post under the Ministry of Communication and it was launched firstly in 2017 in two states on the pilot basis. One is uh, Jharkhand, in Jharkhand uh, the area was Ranchi uh, when, uh, where it was implemented on the demo basis and the second is uh, Chhattisgarh and in Chhattisgarh it was Raipur. So remember this is again very important and Managing Director and uh, CEO is uh, Venkta Raman, Venkta Raman. And uh, tagline is Aapka Bank Aapke Dwar, Aapka Bank Aapke Dwar and headquarter is in New Delhi. So these are very very important things about Indian Post Payment Bank. LIC Housing Finance, uh, if you have any uh, like insurance exam then you can cover this question otherwise it is not important. This organization was established in 1989. MD and CEO is uh, Y Vishwanathan, Y Vishwanath and uh, tagline is where dreams come true or where dreams come home, not true, where dream comes home. And headquarters is in Mumbai. Moving to next question. SEBI will initiate the T plus 1 settlement cycle for equity transactions from which date? So this is again very important. This T plus 1 settlement is very important. Because currently stock market follows T plus 2 settlement cycle. Which takes 48 hours. It means 2 days or more 
for the shares to be transferred into the client account in case of purchase deal. This means a seller cannot demand payment for at least two days because within two days, the uh, you can say all the shares will be transferred to the client account so that they can't, uh, uh, you can say, demand payment for at least two days. But now, uh, stock exchanges can adopt this T plus one settlement. It means money can be, uh, the shares can be transferred within one day. So this will be implemented from 1st of January 2022, but it is not mandatory for all the stock exchanges. It is optional. So it is not mandatory for all the stock exchanges, but it will be started from the 1st of January 2022. So SEBI to allow T plus one settlement cycle as an optional basis. Remember, it is not mandatory from the 1st of January 2022. And Indian stock market can now transfer shares and money into the client accounts within 24 hours. Earlier, it will take 48 hours or more. And it is not mandatory for the stock exchanges to go with T plus 1 settlement cycle. It is an optional choice. So they are flexible to offer either T plus 1 or T plus 2 settlement cycle. So those stock exchanges who want to offer T plus 1 settlement or who want to adopt this settlement system will give one month prior notice, one month prior notice on the uh, change to all stakeholders including the public and also uh, disseminate it on the, its website. So this is very important. So you have to remember about SEBI here. SEBI was established in 1992. Uh, basically it become act in 1992 but it was established in 1988 and had uh, its headquarters in Mumbai and also remember uh, the head is Ajay Tyagi. Ajay Tyagi. Very important organization. Moving to next question. What is the name of application performing or programming interface, application programming interface or API interface, which was launched by National Payment of Corporation of India in partnership with the financial technological company, which is known as Fiserv. So very important question, especially for the banking students. Again, the answer of this question is NFINI. It means FINI. So you have to remember this is very important. And uh, you can also remember that this National Payment Corporation of India in partnership with this FinServ or Fiserv, to launch N59, a rupee based application. Remember, it is rupee based application programming interface uh, to boost credit card based products in India. So you can see here NPCI, Fiserv, and the rupee so that maximum to maximum credit cards can be sold on the rupee platform. So N59 is a uh, banking as a service program that will provide a wide variety of services to the Indian financial technological companies and banks to distribute rupee credit cards. So the main objective is to distribute rupee credit card through this application interface and companies can collaborate and frame new innovative credit card products for rupee credit card customers. And the platform enables financial technological companies to co-create new credit card scheme sponsored by banks registered under the NFINI to increase the use of credit cards in urban and the rural India so that maximum to maximum credit card can be sold, maximum to maximum credit can be given to the urban area people or the rural area people through this NFINI platform. And currently, credit card providers like MasterCard, American Express were barred from the onboarding new customers due to the non-compliance with RBA rules on the data localization. So you have to just remember the question only as in slide, but this uh, word is important, N59, N59. And uh, this uh, FISERV is basically United States of America company. NPCA, you all know it was established in 2008. Its currently head is Dilip Asbe, Dilip Asbe, and its headquarters is in Mumbai, Maharashtra. And even we were talking about the Rupee platform, Rupee platform was launched by NPCA in 2012, 2012. Moving to next question, the first ever International Literacy Day was observed in which year? So again, very important question because International Literacy Day was celebrated every year by UNESCO and it is celebrated all over the world on 8th of September. On 8th of September, it is to highlight the importance of literacy as a matter of dignity and human rights. And first time it was celebrated in the year of 1967. In 1967, so the question answer was C. So you can see here International Literacy Day was celebrated on 8th of September in 2021 and the theme is Literacy for Human Centered Recovery Narrowing the Digital Divide because by literacy you can narrow your digital divide. And the day also aims to advance the literacy agenda towards a more literate and sustainable society. And uh, there are uh, uh, awards which are given under this uh, literacy prize and this is the theme of UNESCO International uh, Literacy Day. Literacy for a human-centered recovery, narrowing the digital divide. You have to remember the first line, literacy for a human-centered recovery. And one award was given by the UNESCO, UNESCO King. 
Sejong Literacy Prize 2021 and in India it is won by National Institute for Open Schooling India. Uh, there are total three categories but uh, one category is won by Indian uh, Open Schooling that is National Institute of Open Schooling. Other two awards won by the different different country but you don't have to remember you have to just remember NIUS or the National Institute of Open Schooling won this King Sejong Literacy Prize 2021 which is awarded by UNESCO at the International Literacy Day. And this King Sejong Literacy Prize was established in 1989 with the support of the government of the Republic of Korea with recognizes mother language based literacy development. And uh, it consists of $20,000 a diploma and a medal which is given by the UNESCO and the uh, um, Republic of Korea or you can say the South Korea. So remember about UNESCO here because uh, this is the main organization who is celebrating this day. Uh, Director General is Audrey Azole. Audrey Azole, headquarters is in Paris, France and it was established in 1945, 1945. Now we are moving to the next question but it is from picture that Union Education Minister Dharmendar Pradhan presents All India Council for Technical Education Awards to teachers of engineering and the technical and the management education. Earlier uh, Ramnath Kovinji uh, provided 44 teachers award the best teachers all over India. Uh, they are in number 44 on the teachers day of 5th of September but now it is uh, for the engineering and the technical and management education uh, teachers award. So you have to remember total 17 faculty members of engineering and the technical education uh, were awarded and also one award was started which is known as AICTE Dr. Preetam Singh Dr. Preetam Singh best teacher award 2021 also started in the year of 2021 first time and it is awarded to three faculty members of the management education. So uh, these awards like uh, Visheshwara Best Teacher Award, Dr. Preetam Singh Best Teacher Award instituted by All India Council of Technical Education to identify and facilitate extraordinary teachers, recognize their excellence, best practices, innovativeness and creativity among students and environmental sensitivity among institutions. And Dr. Preetam Singh Best Teacher Award was introduced in 2021 to honor the faculty member of the management education. So 17 awards, faculty member awards given to the engineering and the technical education and Dr. Preetam Singh award given to the three faculty members of the management education. So you have to just remember otherwise you don't have to remember any name. So AICT is important. It was established in 1945. Its headquarter is in New Delhi and its chairman is Professor Anil D. Anil, you, you can just remember the name Anil. Anil. Moving to next question, it is our important question section but you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and you can join our telegram group from the description box link. And here is the question, All India Institute of Ayurveda signed a MOU with which country university to appoint an academic chair in Ayurveda in that university and this country is Australia. So the name of the Australia's university is Western Sydney University, Western Sydney University. So All India Institute of Ayurveda under the Ministry of Ayush has signed a MOU with the Western Sydney University of Australia to appoint an academic chair of Ayurveda in the University of Australia and it will facilitate academic and research collaboration activities in Ayurveda which includes herbal medicine and yoga in Australia and it will design short and medium term courses and the educational guidelines and the chair will conduct academic workshops related to the Ayurveda system and promote its effectiveness uses in Australia. So we want to promote the Ayurveda in Australia that's why we tie up with the Australian University. And the appointment of chair is jointly funded by Ministry of Ayush of India and Western Sydney University and anticipated to commence uh, early in the 2022. It means the chair will be established in 2022. And remember about Ministry of Ayush, who is the current Union Minister, is Sarabnanda Sonawal. Sarabnanda Sonawal, who was earlier the Chief Minister of Assam. Moving to next question, and it is just from picture. Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology says, Inspire Satellite 1 ready for launch. And it will be launched by uh, ISRO. But uh, Inspire Satellite 1 is all set to launch through an upcoming solar satellite uh, launch vehicle, mission of the Indian Space Research Organization. And uh, this uh, Inspire Satellite 1, uh, you can say it is a constellation of earth and space weather observation satellite is also envisaged under the INSPIRE program. So INSPIRE SAT-1, it is a CubeSat developed under the International Satellite Program in Research and Education. That's why it is known as INSPIRE. And it is equipped with a compact ionosphere probe which will study earth ionosphere which is a part of the fourth layer of atmosphere which is known as thermosphere. 
and it is a constellation of earth and space weather observation satellite and it is also envisaged under the inspire program and the inspire sat 1 mission was originally planned for 2020 but it was delayed due to covid 19 and uh, recent latest news you have to remember isro launched its most advanced geo imaging satellite which is known as eos3 that is capable of near real time monitoring of the natural disasters like floods and cyclones so you have to remember inspire satellite is designed and developed by the international satellite program in research and education and it will be launched by isro and it uh, it earlier it was scheduled in 2020 but now it will be launched earlier it was scheduled uh, um, uh, in 2020 but it was cancelled due to covid 19 and it will study the ionosphere layer which is the fourth layer which is the part of the fourth layer that is thermosphere moving to next question and it is our one liner important point here is the first point rb approves reappointment of vedyanathan as the idfc first bank chief we already covered this question that he was reappointed for the time period of 3 years next is ministry of coal constitute task force and one expert committee for the coal based hydrogen production so who will be the head of the task force ministry of coal uh, constituted this task force under the leadership of vinod kumar tiwari vinod kumar tiwari and uh, next one committee expert committee this was under the rk malhotra rk malhotra and main objective is the contribution in the hydrogen economy in a clean manner and task force will monitor activities toward achieving coal based hydrogen production and uses and expert committee will prepare a road map for the coal based production hydrogen production and the uses next byju quiet grade up we already covered this question food processing week 6 to 12th of september 2021 was celebrated and uh, the main ministry is ministry of food processing and industry and uh, this ministry has announced that food processing week will be celebrated from 6 to 12th of september as a part of azadi ka amrit mahotsav celebration or you can say to commemorate the 75 years of indian independence and this ministry of food processing industry inaugurated five food processing units one in assam to uh, three in gujarat and one in karnataka and who is the union minister of food processing industry it is uh, pashupati kumar paras pashupati kumar paras and uh, his constituency is in hajipur hajipur is in bihar next government sets up three bars to help with tax matters it is not a alcohol bars uh, this is basically a uh, bar stands for board for advance ruling board for advance ruling to help with tax matters uh, you can say um, uh, it will offer help on the tax implications of transactions which in turn will help avoid uh, income tax disputes and out of three uh, this board for advance ruling two will be set up in delhi and one will be set up in mumbai so each uh, board for advance ruling will consist of two members not below the rank of the chief commissioner earlier uh, uh, without bar you can say um, uh, there was an organization which is known as aar authority for advance ruling which was set up in 1993 and uh, this decision to replace was taken for the fast track disposal of the cases related to the tax disputes so uh, this body will be replaced by now board for advance ruling earlier this body was authority for advance ruling now defense ministers announced delegation of financial powers to the defense services 2021 so defense minister rajnath singh ji announced the delegation of financial power to defense services providing enhanced revenue procurement provisions to indian defense forces to strengthen indian security infrastructure it means more financial powers given to the uh, different different personnel or different different commanding officer so that they they can procure weapons they can procure different different things so that we can strengthen our indian security infrastructure so you have to just remember it is rajnath singh and constituency is lucknow uttar pradesh moving to the question of the day what was the question of 8th of september 2021 the proceedings of income tax go to so very simple question so this proceeding is basically goes to center and the states even maximum share goes to states but you have to remember proceedings goes to center and states both and uh, it is imp- uh, imposed and collected by the center government but the proceeds are shared between the both it is even implemented it is applied it is uh, collected by the center government but uh, the proceeds of shared between center and state both and uh, how much share goes to center how much share goes to state it is uh, Uh, according to the advice of the finance commission it is according to the advance ad, uh, advice of the finance commission now we are moving to the question of the day which of the following is an open market operation of the rbi so uh, you have to tell me open market operation we are basically uh, doing the open market operation in the uh, monetary policy but uh, you have to tell me which is which of the following is an open market operation of the rbi so i am waiting your answer you have to tell me read these options carefully 
and uh, i am waiting your answer like this video share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and you can also press this bell button and join our telegram channel for the official notifications and it is a fair cloud promise that it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section definitely uh, don't take life so much serious life is fun always be happy like this smiley and uh, take care